Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Shila Prabhupada and all goes to your holiness. Hare Krishna. Um, Guru Maharaj, may I request you to, uh, can you please lower your screen, uh, Guru Maharaj? We are not able to see you fully. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, right now we have uh, um, nine parties, nine devotees online, Guru Maharaj. Um, hey, can you announce the topic for today? Um, Guru Maharaj, sorry, I didn't know the topic, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, I sent it. Oh, really? To, I sent it for the calendar. It was supposed to come to you. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Okay. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, I didn't check. It was, I did that yesterday. It was supposed to come from Tushar, I think. <laughs> Did he send it to you? No, Guru Maharaj. I'm just checking now. Hmm. All right. That's not so important. I was just thinking you had it with you. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. I didn't. Okay. The topic today is uh, today is Ekadasi. So that is the topic. And the other part of the topic is chanting the holy names uh, and Ekadasi. <clears throat> So that is uh, the topic for today. Om Agyan Timidandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yenatas Mai Shri Gurvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste said is what Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadar Har, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Rindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Um, so, twice a month, we are blessed with, as Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur has described, the mother of devotion. In his writings, he coined this uh, label to be applied to this two days of the month, which we know as Ikarashi. Mm -hmm. uh, Eka means one and Dasi means 10. So Ikarashi simply means 11th day uh, before the uh, full moon and 11 days after the full moon or the waning and waxing moon 11 days before and after. It is designated by the Shastras as being a very auspicious time where one can increase quite uh, effectively, or we might say uh, very much more than they will on other days, the, their practice of devotional service. And Akadasi simply means chanting Hare Krishna. Um, as it's explained by Srila Prabhupada in many of his lectures, uh, Kadasi simply means chanting, that's all. And not taking anything. Kadasi in its true sense is uh, near gel. No water, no food. Chanting from the time Kadasi begins, which is sunrise on that day to the sunrise of the next day. 24 hours. 
Now, because we are not able to follow such strictness as a regular procedure, the Acharyas have given us some uh, reduction of the austerities, we might say somewhat concessionary, but still within the realm of acceptability. And that is one can follow Kadasi in five different ways when it comes to um, taking care of the physical and mental body, physical body mostly. And that means one may perform near gel without taking any water and chanting, or man, one may take just water, or one may take uh, just fruit and milk, and then a little bit lower than that, one may take food that is not cooked, anikadasi, and one, the uh, minimum you can follow with Kadasi is no grains and no beans. Prabhupada, knowing the Western upbringing, the lack of training, the inability to follow strict forms of austerity, he gave us the minimum, no grains and no beans. But that doesn't mean one should elaborately indulge in eating on that day in other areas of foodstuffs. It's a day of simplicity, a day of renunciation, a day of great amounts of spiritual benefit that comes with chanting the holy names of the Lord. And here is the emphasis. There's actually a story related to the inception of Ekadasi, which is mentioned in the Vishnu Purana called Papa Purush. Mm -hmm. Papa, Papa, we understand means sinful and Purusha means personality. There was a personality who was, who was designated, given the particular category as sin personified. And um, he's a sinful person. <laughs> He, uh, he causes problems with others, and that's the nature of sinful people. But um, he was chastised by the Lord, by Lord Vishnu himself, and was told that uh, you can't stay anywhere because of your sinful nature. But he said, you know, I am your creation also. You have given me life. Now you have to give me some place to reside. So the Lord considered that. And he said, well, you may reside where wherever people are eating food grains on these days known as Ikarasi, which happens twice a month. So therefore anyone who eats food grains on the codice is accepting the reactions of sinful activities. In fact, the scriptures are very strong in this area and it says, by offering food grains on this day, one is actually a, a killer of their spiritual master, their and their mother and father. Very heavy uh, reactions for of course, people in the in the in the material world don't are not aware of this, and so because they don't follow any spiritual practices, and their life is basically breaking the regulative principles anyway. This is what goes on today is the the day to day life of the people in general: meat eating, illicit sex, various forms of intoxication and gambling in different varieties. So they're always full of sinful activity. So this is not going to uh, push them down any farther because as long as they're breaking these other activities, they're in 
a very pitiable condition. But for devotees, devotees should be very much aware of this to very carefully follow this process given to us by the Acharyas coming through Srila Prabhupada of following the Akadasi. But the benefit really in Akadasi is minimizing bodily activities, eating and sleeping, and uh, chanting the holy names of the Lord. So there's much spiritual benefit that is gained on this day, chanting the holy names of the Lord and performing spiritual activities. Sometimes a person may mistakenly think, well, because I'm not eating or because I'm eating less, I'm tired, therefore I should uh, take more rest. This incident came in, in front of Srila Prabhupada one time when one he walked into one ashram and the boys were there and there was a Kadasini. One boy was sleeping. So Prabhupada spoke to the other boys, why is he sleeping on a Kadasi? during the day. So one boy said, well, he's feeling a little weak and so he, he's resting. And Prabhupada said, no, if he's, if he's fasting and he's feeling weak and he's resting, better to give him something to eat and let him do his service. So this is uh, that service attitude is prominent in each, each and every day of the year we practice devotional service, but especially on the Akadasi day, where it's meant to increase our service and not decrease our service. And there's much spiritual benefit from that. And chanting, of course, it says that one should chant. Um, there are devotees in our movement. There are a few, not many, but there are some. I don't know how many in numbers, but I know it exists that there are devotees that chant 192 rounds on the Akadasi day. From the time it begins to the time uh, they finish, usually it's constant chanting throughout the whole day and into the evening also. There are devotees who chant 64 rounds a day. This is quite common for many devotees who follow that. And there's others who have taken greater numerical vows on this particular day. And this is recommended. It's not that we should simply go on as a routine day and simply fast from grains and beans and call it a codicy. We should also be increasing the amount of our chanting and our service. And when Srila Prabhupada was asked in a discussion with Tamal Krishna Goswami and other devotees, when asked about you know, chanting on this day, it, it came in, a, in, in terms of a discussion that went back and forth. And Prabhupada said 25 rounds on this day. So that statement is there in Prabhupada's uh, discussions. I think it's a, it might be a morning walk conversation with Srila Prabhupada and, and his senior devotees, but Prabhupada made it the point at 16 rounds is, uh, and he said that in general, at 16 rounds is simply a way to get started. But on the Akadasi day, we should think in terms of chanting, chanting, and chanting. Of course, we can also do that on any day, but on Akadasi, it has special merit and blessings as Bhakti Vinod Thakur calls it the mother of devotion. That is a very lofty title given to Akadasi. Um, when you say mother, you're saying the best of all people. And when you're saying devotion, you're saying the best of all activities. So giving that title to this day that appears twice a month is, uh, is an indication of how sacred this particular day is and how beneficial it is for our spiritual growth. And also for our... Uh, um, uh, improving the qualities of the chanting because in order to chant better to overcome uh, inattentive chanting to overcome um, tasteless chanting it's important to increase chanting to chant, chant, chant 
like that. And uh, this is our, this is, I know devotees who have made uh, japa vows throughout the year at different times for, in order to go deeper into the holy name. And you'll find, I remember when we were doing a japa retreat back in the year 2008 in America, devotees had come from different places and around the world. It was conducted by His Holiness Satchinanda Maharaj. And all the devotees, I think there was about, oh, more than close to 200 of us. We would come together in the morning for a satsang. We would do Mangal Arti. Uh, we would also do Guru Puja. And then we would have class. And then that class would be centered around the glories of the Holy Name. And then the devotees would, you know, go for breakfast. I remember the prasadam that time was extremely, extremely simple. It was not bland, it was tasty, but very simple. Not a lot of uh, spicing, not, not a lot of ghee, not a lot of sweets. None of these things were there. It was pretty much as simple as you could get, but also quite tasty to allow devotees to eat and have prasadam at the same time, not uh, get distracted and focus more and more on their chanting. And so we would chant and this went on for a whole week. We lived there for a week and two of the days out of the five, we were chanting 64 rounds. At the end of the day, or towards the evening, we would come again and all the devotees would meet back and then we would have discussions again on the holy name. A lot of it was realizations that devotees had gotten during their chanting. And, uh, and it was all basically centered around improving the quality of our chanting, improving our enthusiasm for chanting. So Akadasi has that same um, direction attached to it. It helps us to go deeper into the holy name and allows us to uh, somehow overcome some of the inebriates that may be there in our day-to-day -day chanting. Chant more, chant always is a little cliche that we've been presenting for everyone. Uh, because our whole movement centers around the quality of our chanting. Our whole advancement centers around the quality of our chanting. So um, any opportunities that are designated in that way for growth in the quality and quantity of our chanting is a great benediction. And we should take advantage of this, and that's why this ecodicy is important. And minimizing bodily activities, because if you don't do that on this particular day, you will find that you won't be able to go deeper into your chanting and at the same time uh, increase the, the numerical vow. So um, chanting and the codice are practically synonymous. <laughs> at least the word codice means chanting. That's what it really, it means the 11th day uh, before and after the waning and waxing moon, but it also means chanting. That's the actual essence of the ex of the appearance of a codice is to chant, chant, and chant. Okay, so these are some points to look towards. Um, the value of this particular day of the month. Sometimes devotees may feel a little apprehensive. Uh oh, here comes a codice. That means I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I can't do this, like that. <laughs> but it should be the other way. We should look forward. Oh, here comes the codice again. Wonderful. I can't wait for the opportunity to take advantage of the mercy available on this day and put aside a lot of other activities and just go deeper into the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Okay, so these are some things we can think about. Uh, for this Akadasi day. There have been books put out in our movement on the Akadasi. I know at least three of them that are available and uh, take advantage of that. And, uh, 
uh, become more and more fixed in the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for uh, um, telling us of the importance of Ekadasi one, one more time and uh, about the chanting of holy names on this day, uh, how it is important. Um, Guru Maharaj, is a reading is also important, Guru Maharaj, like reading Srila Prabhupada books? Um, like I find reading, and it's also mentioned that reading supports our chanting, it fixes our mind on the philosophical teachings and the essence of the teachings is about glorifying the Lord and the essence of glorification of the Lord is the chanting of the holy name. But reading Srimad Bhagavatam, reading Srila Prabhupada's books is also a recommended activity every day and essential activity, but especially on the Kadasi also. We can take advantage of that. There are, uh, I could give a suggested routine that you could follow on the Kadasi and that is you chant for maybe an hour or so, and may, or maybe even more, depending on how much you want to chant, or chant maybe two hours and then sit down, read for an hour, and get up and chant again for maybe two more hours, and then read for another hour, and then go back and forth between chanting and reading, and make that your day. That is one way to really go deeper, because, uh, Chanting inspires the, the quality of our devotion. Reading awakens within the heart and mind the philosophical teachings, and at the same time, it fixes the mind on the process of devotional service. <laughs> so both uh, could be performed simultaneously on this day. But just to read and minimize our chanting, I think it doesn't give proper respect and honor to Akadasi. We need to balance both of those together. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. Thank you so much. This schedule looks very great, um, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, I feel difficulty to uh, give a lot of time, but um, especially for reading. Um, I do extra rounds on chanting, but um, uh, chanting, but reading becomes a little less on Ekadasi because of other things in, at home. So, yeah, I'll mm -hmm. try Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, but if you just do chanting, that's that's good enough. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna devotees, um, I request if, they have, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, um, you can uh, ask Guru Maharaj or type in the chat. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm sorry I joined late, so I'm really sorry if you already covered this. Um, it's probably a very basic question. Does Ikadashi start on midnight the day before, or is it sunrise to sunrise? Yeah, you can see on the, on the calendars, it gives the indication. It's from sunrise to sunrise, but it's not exactly to the minute for example, I'll give you, I'll give you this particular codice's uh, uh, schedule. Okay, so today is, so the codice would start uh, at um, five thirty-five in the morning, and that has to be adjusted according to time zones. But five thirty-five. And then the next day, the codice ends at 5.33. So you'll see there's a two minute. So you follow the particular, um, you know, uh, listings. You can find it on your phones with all of the other details on when is the TT, what is, what is the, uh, the Dwadasi, what is the name of the Akadasi? All these things are there, yeah, like that. So it's it's gen it's generally from it is from sunrise to sunrise. But what I do is, you know, when I get up that particular morning, which will be before the Akadasi starts. Sometimes it's a couple hours before Akadasi starts. I'll begin my Akadasi chanting. 
like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you? You feeling good? Yes, very much. Thank you. A little um, sore throat today, but feeling fine. Good, 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 good. Thank you so much for asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sivam Namrata Hare Krishna. Oh, all glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. My humble obeisances. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, about the uh, breaking fast of uh, Ikadashi, you just told me the time. I have one uh, calendar from uh, London Temple which says it is uh, 6, 7 sunrise time to break the Ikadashi. Uh, and you, uh, the actual, in order for you to get the particular TT time, you have to do it according to where you are situated. So you're in India. So you have to find that time for your area for breaking because it'll differ from time zone to time zone. Uh, do we follow drink panchang Maharaj or not? Do we, do we follow? Drink panchang, drink panchang. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the word. I, I couldn't clearly understand. Uh, it is drink panchang. Panchang. Yeah, let, 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 let me get you the word, uh, the spelling of it. Drink panchang. D r i k drink. Drink panchang. I got I'm it. Not, I'm Google. not sure what it means. Mm -hmm. What is drink drink panchang? Does somebody know? Gurmaraj, I think it's a calendar uh, where um, you'll get all the um, details of all the time zones. Um, according to that, um, it will change. You can select. Uh, I know that it's a traditional um, Panchang type calendar, I think, Gurmaraj. Um, it has all the codices on there? Yes, yes, Gurmaraj. So all the um, calendars are available like Vaishnava calendar, Telugu calendar, Hindi calendar, um, or for Indian festivals. And all in the time zones also, we can select the city and state and country. And um, based on that, we can get the uh, you know, dates and timings, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, that's good. But what I always do, and I'm not sure, is I just contact a local temple. Okay. And a lot okay. of the local temples, a lot of the local temples put out uh, calendars also. Like for instance, I'm here in, uh, and here in Slovenia. And so tomorrow is from 5.38 to 10.32. So that's for Slovenia. And now if I go to my Bhaktivedanta London calendar, and we'll find a different, we'll find from 5.19 to 10.24. So there's a slight change according to area so uh, if you're unsure i would go to just contact the local temple and get get it get it from someone who knows that's all because the temples follow it very strictly okay maharaj i'll do that right now uh, i cannot but from next ekadashi i'll surely do that before uh, the next ekadashi arrives i'll go to the temple thank you mara you don't have to go just, just 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 see if they have a calendar or give a call or something like that uh, but if you're following ekadashi today you have to know the tt time tomorrow in order to get the benefit of the ekadashi so it's important you find out tomorrow 
Do you, is it a codicy yes. today in, in India? Yes, it is. Find out, but it's just, you have, you know, you have at least 12 hours or more. You can find out when, maybe not so much, maybe you have about eight hours, but you can find out what is the tomorrow morning yeah. meetings. So. Yeah, I'll try to do that, uh, confirming with one of my cousins, I'll do that. Thank you. Because if one misses the TT time, they say that minimizes the effect of the the Akadasi vow. Okay, yes, Maharaj, I realize that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. It's uh, Saranagati, she's also in India and she said she will send the time. So, uh, so you can, you'll find out in a few minutes. <laughs> Dear, dear devotees, any questions or comments or realizations? Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Gurudev. Thank you so much for giving us this uh, wonderful information. It's quite a revelation to me. It's not, I'm just uh, sharing that uh, the schedule that you have given, you know, chant and then read and then chant. That is just so revelatory for me because I had this mindset, okay, I've woken up early, I've chanted my rounds, my extra rounds for Ikadashi. Now I'm going to get to business. Now I'm going to start this and that activity. My mindset was more on finish my rounds and do something. But now my whole mindset is no, I have to go deeper into the holy name. I have to actually take the opportunity to chant more. So I'm just quite blown away by what you have shared today that chant for two hours, read for one hour, chant again, read. So basically focus on the holy name. So thank you so much for, for giving us this uh, wonderful knowledge. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah. You, Hare Krishna. You also, you may, you may make your uh, schedule accordingly. So how much you want to spend on both activities back and forth. I gave a, I just gave a, an example Whatever works for you, that's one way to follow a codice. But the idea is also minimize eating and sleeping on this day. Hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for this. Mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj, looks like there are no more questions. Um, Hare Krishna, may I ask another one? Yeah, yes, Mataji, go ahead, please. Um, Guru Maharaj, is it okay if I ask an unrelated question? Um, we're here. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I hope that's all right. And again, I'm sorry, because um, it's been hard for me to attend the classes live, so I'm sorry if you've covered this. Um, just feeling a little bit you know, the world is in such a sad state right now and we're all mourning Pankajandri Prabhu and I know you gave a talk about him already. Um, but just in general, everything just feels really bleak and it seems like there's really no end in sight. Um, and not just with the COVID situation, but just, I guess that's the primary thing, um, just people being kept apart and all of that. And I know we've covered this so often, but um, it feels almost like a second wave of sadness, <clears throat> sadness also. Um, so I was just wondering if maybe you could provide some words of comfort or assurance. And yeah, I know that this is basic, but yeah. Uh, 
something going on on a bigger scale and people are confused uh, unsure of how to live their life uh, and sometimes there's an overreaction to the situation where just like in America, for instance, domestic violence has greatly increased, increased during this lockdown. It's not being reported so much because it doesn't look good in the face of the lockdown, but it's there. The reports are there. A lot of, uh, you know, where do we go from here? <laughs> Um, yeah, there is, but for devotees, it's the most important thing is to stay together as a group and give support and enthusiasm to each other, not only in our words and in our association, but in taking, engaging in devotional activities. Uh, if we're at home and there's no possibility of going to temples then I think we should invite people over and have kirtan at the house and Prabhachan. Uh, the devotee association centered around the basic simple process of, of chanting discussion uh, is uh, really what gives us happiness and life and, and enlightenment when we stay isolated from each other and we live simply on the computer, <laughs> which sometimes I find myself uh, doing much more than I want to in that area, uh, we sometimes feel a little lost in our practice of Krishna consciousness. So Sadhu Sangha, we're doing it the best we can through the media, but as much as possible, we should also do it in the day-to-day -day life. Uh, some places are more open than others, but I don't think we should be fearful of associating with each other. Uh, this is our life. We get inspiration from each other. We get uh, enthusiasm from each other. We get, uh, uh, we forget about our problems <laughs> and the so-called problems that come due to lack of association is all, all of that is. So we need to reinforce each other in our Krishna consciousness by staying connected with each other in the activities of devotional service and also inspiring each other and, and helping each other go through the struggles that we are going through. For instance, now I uh, just received a letter today from Mother Vishnu Priya from Germany and herself, and she didn't mention the names of others, have been tested positive with this uh, COVID virus. And so now there is a, uh, you know, obviously there's a concern how to uh, get healthy again. So we can reach out to these devotees, talk to them. Um, doesn't necessarily mean we have to re recommend so many health remedies, but just giving some association with each other. Uh, that an encouragement that we're there for you like that. So when devotees have problems that are created by the external environment or our own individual struggles, we need association. <laughs> sometimes I call, I, sometimes I just spend time calling different devotees on the phone and talking about different things just to have association. <laughs> so we shouldn't allow this uh, lockdown, which is there in different degrees around the world to become, cause us to become oppressive in our own lifestyle. We, it's based on association and uh, 
chanting the holy names, having kirtans like that. Just like, um, I can't remember when it was, just recently we did a program with the devotees in, uh, where was it? I can't remember, a couple weeks ago. And uh, the ending part of the po program, oh yeah, it was our, uh, it was our uh, disciples meeting. The devotees from uh, uh, Ljubljana, they had kirtan at the end. And I got a lot of good responses from devotees saying how nice the kirtan was, how enlivening it was like that. So connect to the kirtans. Don't let kirtan, because you're not in the temple, don't let kirtan die out of your life. <laughs> kirtan is something that gives us inspiration. It overcomes the negativity around and it, it, it fixes our mind in a very wonderful way on the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So association and spiritual activities should not be sidelined because of this uh, restrictive imposition of association that's been given to us by the secular society. We need each other. <laughs> It's, it's the, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, what is it called? It's, it's the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It's not just, I'm Krishna conscious in my own little thing and that's all I can, I can that's all I can see. We need to reach out. Can contact those devotees that you love the most, that you resonate the most with, that you can talk to, that you can do things with. These are all part of staying Krishna conscious. That's basically all I can think of like that. Uh, don't live a sedentary life, especially this time of the year. The spring season is a time where people are generally breaking out of the winter sleep and moving in different areas, planning new events and arranging for many, many things to happen in the upcoming uh, months. It's a time of more of activity. It resonates more with our, our existence. We are part of nature. And so we, springtime really means to move forward. So if we're staying in the house in front of the computer all the day <laughs> and doing whatever we're doing, I, I find it hard to stay alive. <laughs> And there's a kind of a sadness, and the sadness is usually due to, as, as uh, Lord Chaitanya was discussing with Ramananda Roy, he said, what is the greatest unhappiness? He was asking Ramananda Roy various questions. And this question came up, what is the greatest unhappiness? What is the greatest unhappiness? And Ramananda Roy rightly replied, a separation from the devotees of the Lord. So yeah, we want we need to stay in, in association with each other. What is any more questions or comments? Uh, yeah, Lavanya, please, if I may. Uh, Guru Maharaj, just on this point of uh, Sadhu Sangha and trying to come together, what can we do uh, when we make a proposal to make it attractive for, for devotees to join in? For example, just a simple example, and I'm not complaining, I'm just asking so we can do better. Uh, Lavanya and I decided that Ikadashi today, 
let's all come together and chat. And so we put out this little thing, you know, on our WhatsApp group saying, uh, we're going to do chanting, we're going to have the Japa call going all the way till Guru Maharaj's class. Uh, please join so that we can all come together and chant the holy names. Of course, we're going to have Mangal Arti. Uh, if you'd like to join for that, that begins and all timings and everything. And practically, I would say two other devotees joined briefly, but other than Lavanya and me, there was nobody on the call. Mm. So what 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 are we doing wrong? What, what can we do to make it more congenial or attractive or, or uh, uh, beneficial in some way to invite just keep, it, just keep it going and just continue to invite people to come. We can't say why people are coming or not coming. We don't really can't see the whole picture, but just continue with your programs. Just like I'm doing this thing, this class every day, we've been doing it for, you know, like 14 months now, starting in March of last year. It's been going on every day. So sometimes I see the numbers are like 30 people. Sometimes they see, like today there's 24. And sometimes I see 15. And so the numbers fluctuate, but that doesn't mean we, you know, become less enthusiastic because of the numbers. We keep it going and, and we want as many people as to, to come on as possible, but simply we try to provide topics that are of interest that, that may inspire people to come on. So just think how you can make it more attractive. That's all. And uh, we should. You can't be attached to the results. You just have to try. That's all. Try your best. <laughs> okay, Guru Maharaj. We'll try to keep it going. Thank you so much. Steadiness will also bring about uh, more and more participation if you keep things moving. In. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj, and uh, Manisha has sent some suggestions, so we'll take that seriously. Thank you. Guru Maharaj, uh, so I think uh, we are almost at the end of the hour. Um, can we end with one round of chanting, if you like? Yeah, there's no more questions? I think so, Guru Maharaj. Okay, yeah, today would be a wonderful day. And that's what I'll be doing when I leave you guys, just chanting. <laughs> Some you. Stuff. Let me ask the devotees this. Okay, how many of you out there Maybe you can just uh, flash your your uh, video on and off. How many of you out there are ch chant more rounds on the Kadasi than on the normal day? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else that chants more rounds? Just flash your bit or just make a sound saying yes and then announce your name. Mohanasini 25, Archana City, Raghu, uh, Namrata. She does two more rounds. Great. Well, who else? Anybody out there? Raghu. Okay, we got Dharma Vatsal. Vishwapavani does 64 or more on this day. Whoa, thank you, Vishwapavani. You are an inspiration for all of us. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Mahatma, he's, he loves to chant. So how many are you doing? Sorry, Guru Maharaj. On the Kadashi. Well, I try to keep 25 if I can. Okay, good. That's Prabhupada's recommendation, at least 25. 
Good. I chant 20 rounds every day as a normal thing, but ever since this COVID thing started, now I chant between 24 and 28 rounds every day. And I kind of see I chant 40, 40. So uh, because I chant 20 as a vow, I double it on the kind of see 40 like that. So just to let you know, not the, not the sound, uh, you know, proud, but this is something I look forward to. Anyone else? Mother Shilpa, she does uh, sometimes two extra rounds. Uh, uh, yeah, Sri Devi, she does more. So, uh, Mother Sa Sama, Sa Soma Dachri, she does many more rounds on this day. Who else? Anyone else? Madhavananda, I know he chants extra on this round. Is he on the line today? Suda, yes, she does one extra round. Good. Chanting is the basis of our spiritual advancement. Because when you're chanting, everything else follows nicely. In other words, you have the enthusiasm and you have the clarity of vision how to live your day in Krishna consciousness. Chant as much as you can. And this is Srila Prabhupada's instruction. Uh, I have been compiling uh, various statements from Srila Prabhupada where throughout his books and lectures where he speaks about chanting 24 hours a day. And I have a whole series of references of Prabhupada's statements where he indicates chant 24 hours a day. So that is actually the principle of, you know, perfect Krishna consciousness, to always be in touch with Krishna. Okay. Uh, Eknath Diore Prabhu is saying that he completes 16 rounds and uh, uh, Zenka Stovisek um, he's telling that uh, four more rounds they are doing. Um, Zenka? Yeah. Zenka, that's a, that's a lady who lives oh, in uh, <laughs> she lives in uh, Slovenia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. Wonderful so lady. He's telling that um, she does four more rounds extra and uh, Eknath Prabhu, he's saying that 16 rounds. Okay. The idea is chant more, chant always. 